Hey there, David from iOS Dev School here, and today we are going to build this application for iOS 16 using Swift UI. It's a basic loan tracker application where you can uh, create any loan that you have taken. Once you have created the loan, you can click the plus button there. This is the ready application just for demonstration purposes, what we are going to do. Right, so the loan will have a name and an amount, start and due date. Uh, if the information is not available, the done button is automatically disabled. So let's give it a loan one. Let's say we take 10,000. Start date. Here we have limit that the start date cannot be any future date. So let's uh, pretend that we took the loan in 2022. And uh, the due date, again, uh, we have a limit here that it cannot be before the start date. So if I go to 2021, it's or any day before, we cannot do it. So let's go to 2022. You can see we took the loan on February 12th. Everything before is grayed out, so we cannot do, choose that date. So I'm going to say, uh, let's pretend that the loan is for one year and click done. So now we have this loan one here for 10,000. And uh, here we have the due date. Uh, once we click on the loan, it shows our progress, how much we have paid. This is all the payments view here. You can click add to uh, insert a payment. Let's say we have paid uh, 5,000. Uh, again, here we have the limit on the dates. You cannot enter the date before. And uh, let's say uh, done. Now you can see that we have paid 5,000 and the date and the bar here loads as much as we have paid. So this is the half and the remaining half here. And then the, all the payments are here. Let's say we paid another 600. Let's say it was like two days later and it will show you the different dates and also it calculates when we are expected to finish if we continue this way you can swipe to delete any of the loans and uh, you can see that uh, everything is being updated at the loading bar or you can click and edit any amount let's say 5500 5, here it's being updated right so this is the basic uh, application that we are going to do and uh, let's get started i'm going to create a new xcode project it's going to be a uh, ios app click next i'm going to call this um, loan tracker 2 because i already have one loan tracker on my desktop but you can call yours the way you want make sure that you have interface as swift ui not storyboard and uh, check this use core data so it will do some setup for us so click next and we're going to save it on my desktop click create and this is our ready application you may see that uh, right now, whenever you are using a core data application, uh, the boilerplate code automatically includes some data in our core data where you can edit or add anything that you want. It's just a dummy application here. So what we are going to do, basically this um, content view, I'm just going to get rid of basically everything. Let's just have here in our body, just the text for now. So that it doesn't complain and everything else I'm going to delete. And preview, of course, we're going to keep. All right, and this should work. Okay, we have our view here. So, um, our application is cleaned up that part. The next thing we're going to do is work on our persistence Swift file. Again, this file was created by uh, Apple for us because we have chosen the core data. So what we need to do is uh, clean it up a little bit. Uh, this preview, uh, static var preview, just select everything and we're going to delete because we're not going to need that. The container stays. I'm going to add another helper variable here call it view context and this is a type of NS managed object context and we are simply going to return our container and then the view context all right whenever you are returning something and it's only one liner you don't have to have the return keyword you, know, you can get rid of it 
All right, so we have this variable. Then in our in memory, let's just get rid of all these comments. And we have automatic merging policy is true. Okay, and I'm going to add here after our initializer, I'm going to add one function, which is like a helper function is going to save data in our core data. So whenever we have uh, something to save, we can uh, use this function to save it from anywhere we have in our application. So uh, let's put everything in a do catch block. Because whenever we are saving something in core data, it may throw an error. So we want to get it. So we say try, and then we access our container dot view context. Or we can actually even access our view context directly because we have created that variable. And we just call a save on it. That's it, this will save. And for catch, let's just print any error we have. Let's say error saving to core data. And we can actually pass our error here and get a localized description so we know what's going on. So this is basically our persistent controller uh, after editing whatever Apple gave us. So let's go to our application entry point. And here we have this uh, persistent controller. <clears throat> Again, this is uh, done by Apple for us. We are passing it to our content view, which is the view here as the environment object. So we have our persistent controller as environment object ready. What we can do because this variable is not used anywhere else, we're just passing it to environment, we can just uh, get this and pass it straight away and get rid of this variable. All right, so we have uh, our persistent controller, shared container, and then we're passing the view context. Cool. Um, this is the main setup that we have. Now we can move to our content view. And here we can uh, start building our application. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to rename this file because the entry point of our application will be the view that is going to show all the loans. Here we don't need this uh, persistent controller. We just need our content view. So let's uh, right click and refactor, rename. I'm going to call this all loans view. Okay, and this will, uh, if you are uh, renaming, it will come and rename uh, your view here as well. So your application will still run. Let's quickly run our application on our device, actually on a simulator, just to see if everything is in order and everything is working. We're getting our hello screen, which is good. So I'm minimizing that and let's close this one as well. So let's quickly uh, jump to our ready application and see what we need here. Um, we have here our navigation stack with a title, an add button, and the list with different rows. So let's start with our navigation stack. And then inside I'm going to pass a list. And our list is going to show us all the items that we have in our core data because we're going to fetch all the information from our core data and show it in our view. But right now we don't have anything. So uh, let's just for our viewing purposes do uh, for each here. And I'm going to just say uh, zero to five. So we will have five rows, I in. So we'll get this I and let's just say text and we pass row i and we should be able to see five rows here which we see okay so these are our five rows um every list if you want to change the style of it you can uh, select where the list finishes just say uh, list style and here you have different options you just click on the dot and it will give you the options you can group plain automatic so look if i choose a plane the rows are changing. I'm going to keep mine uh, this way. So if you want to do uh, yours in a different way, you can change that. Another thing we need to do uh, just to get our navigation title on our list, not on navigation stack, I'm going to click dot navigation title. And this is going to be all loans. Okay, so we get our navigation title. The next thing is to have an add 
pattern there. So what we can do is uh, to add a navigation pattern there is use the toolbar. So we have our toolbar with the content. And in our toolbar content, we are going to create a toolbar item. And here we have a placement and content. If you click on an option button, it will automatically highlight these uh, all the parameters because this is an optional. By default, it's grayed out, so you don't have to pass that parameter. But if you click on option and then hit enter, it will give you this parameter as well. So uh, what I'm going to do is our placement. I'm going to say dot navigation and I want to put it on the trailing side because this is the leading and this is trailing for uh, at least the languages that are left to right. So uh, we put it on a trailing and here just hit enter. This will be our block where we are going to pass our view. So whatever we put here will be like uh, placed here on a trailing side. So what I'm going to do is to create a button. But uh, since I don't want to make really, really big uh, the body variable here, we're going to separate this button and bring it out a little bit so it's more easier to read. So I'm going to create a function which is marked as view builder because this function is going to return a view. Then it's going to be a private func called this add button. And this is going to return some view. 